Since she left politics, Bess Price has worked with camp kids in Alice Springs who have become front and centre this week over rising youth crime in that town. Today, she was recognised with an Australia Day honour and caught up with our Northern Australia correspondent, Matt Cunningham. Bess Price, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And I'm, I'm honoured and I want to thank um, Jim Franklin, who nominated me. I was just looking through the citation and the list is so long, you know, if we tried to, to mention it all here, we, we wouldn't have time. I mean, everything um, from your work as a politician through to your work now as an educator, uh, what has driven you to want to give back to the community? It, it's, well, first of all, it's, it's how um, I was raised. And um, I want to thank my mother and father for that because they were able to give me that education, you know, and that, um, you know, a, um, a way forward for me to, you know, better understand um, you know, my people or in the Northern Territory and the world and to be able to uh, um, feel, you know, free to be able to be the person of the world and to help as many you know, people as I can. Well, let's talk about your upbringing. I mean, tell us about where you were raised and how you managed to walk between two worlds, both you know, the Walpuri culture, um, but also to, to be able to, to come from um, you know, a remote Aboriginal community, but then be, a, be able to make such a big contribution um, in a, a non-Indigenous world. Yeah, I, um, I'm originally from Yundabu. Uh, I was born and raised out at Yundabu, um, given birth under a tree by my mum in the 60s. Um, did most of my education, um, primary education um, out at Yundabu. Uh, it was in those times when we were taught the old, um, old, old style of uh, teaching, which is basically English in all the classrooms. Um, which in turn gave us an opportunity, to, you know, to be able to, you know, work, walk that world now. And um, it, it, and for me now, just looking back, I really, really was um, not privileged, but it was great that I was, I was brought up by my mum and dad, and to be able to. Um, be given an opportunity to, you know, move further and move, move forward and be able to work with anybody out there. You were at one stage probably the highest profile Aboriginal person who supported the Northern Territory emergency response, the, the intervention. Why did you feel a need to support that policy? I, well, I supported it because I, I lived that lifestyle that the intervention was you know, focusing on. Um, I could see my people um, being drowned in this you know, horrible situation that we were in. And um, yes, I did speak openly about it because I, I could see myself that this was the only way out for my people to be able to be given is something else to think about to be able to help their families and children you know, to, to have, make it a better situation. We're seeing a lot of those issues raise their head again right now. What do you make of the situation in Alice Springs at the moment and, and what do you think needs to be done uh, to fix these issues? Well, what I'd like to see is the, the traditional owners, the central Aranda people, be the first um, port of call, to be able to get them um, together to talk to them about, you know, this is your country. Um, in in Aboriginal culture, others are supposed to respect that it's your country and not their country, and abide by your, you know, your cultural authority. What do you think that's been happening at the moment? Well, um, because of the situation, Alice Springs. I mean, because of the location of Alice Springs. It, it, there's too much um, interference, you know, outside interference. Um, there's 
you know, today's government is not really doing... Well, the Northern Territory Labor government is not doing anything about it at all. They want to be not seen, you know, being racist. You know, that's the latest fad that people use. Um, but what needs to be done is the... the you know, we talk so much about, you know... Um, cultural protocol. That's not happening here in Alice Springs. You know, they're, they're disregarding the tr you know, Central Islander traditional owners who have the authority to make decisions about their country. They should be, they should be the first people to talk to and have proper good meetings with them. And I don't know where Lira Tipo is at. Um, they are the body for the traditional owners of this town. And um, I'd like to see more of it. I'd like to see them step up and be given um, the voice that's needed to be able to talk and talk about ways of how to deal with the influx of all these other uh, Aboriginal groups that have come into Alice Springs. It, it, it's, it's not race-based. You know, Aboriginal people out there in these town camps can tell you they don't want alcohol in their town camps. You know, they don't want it because my sister-in-law lives in a town camp it, she's on dialysis and she's bothered every night, every day by drunks who come, bang on her door, charge in, make themselves at home and terrorise you know, this house full of women and children. They don't want it. They don't, this Labor government doesn't go and talk to her. They don't go out and actually find people who actually are complaining about the alcohol situation here in Alice Springs. Best Price there, speaking to Matt Cunningham on her Australia Day honour.